I remember that my 10th transfer, I only had 11, I, my 10th transfer, I told someone that he was going to be married to the atonement instead of experience the atonement because marriage is kekon and experience is kekon. So like, we both like, I said it and then we both froze and we were like, wait a minute. And he was like, you just told me I was going to marry the atonement. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's funny, but... There's typhoons a lot in Japan. I'm sure like, you know what that's like in the Philippines, yeah. but there's, there's a lot of typhoons and crazy rain and wind. So when that happens, stay inside, because we didn't. <laughs> and seriously, feared for my life. <laughs> no, but... It's it's not it's not super crazy a lot, but um, but it's really rainy, and so you get to wear these sweet kappas, like rain suits, which you still get wet and you just bake inside because you're all hot and gross, but they're fun. I really like clothes and shoes and things, but I had to learn like it was hard, but I had to learn as a missionary. Just it's not about that. It's not just get a comfortable pair of shoes. And get like two comfortable pairs of shoes, a brown pair and a black pair. So I'll match with everything. And then like a nice pair for conferences. And then you, even if you pack like lots of outfits, I only wore like five shirts the whole time. Like five shirts and like two skirts. I just alternate between black and gray. <laughs> so pack light and don't worry about I always thought that Japan like wouldn't have stores and like wouldn't have what I needed, but it has everything you need pretty much. So don't worry if you forget something or you know bring a good enough winter coat because they have winter coats there, and they're very warm. They'll keep you warm. I was thinking like big like Tokyo like video games, <laughs> it's like lots of lights and big buildings, which it's kind of like that in Kobe, but for the most part it's. It's really similar to, like, America, but, um, I just remember the little crosswalk signs. Those were different. The little men were different, and it was funny to me. But, um, also the, the bathrooms are different. The toilets are different. <laughs> the bidets there, which is cool. Anyways, <laughs> but, um, it's pretty much the same as America in a lot of ways. This one's kind of funny. So, like, as a missionary, you want to be, like, on time, right? And you want to be exactly obedient with curfew. you got to get home. But, like, one day, we had texted an investigator because she canceled on our lesson because she was sick. And we're like, oh, well, we'll bring you soup. Like, oh, funny thing, we're making soup today, even though, like, we hadn't made any yet. <laughs> but she didn't text us all day until, like, 7.30 at night. And she was like... Yeah, like, I'll take some soup. That'd be great. We're like, dang it. Like, we don't have soup. So we, like, rush home. And we're like, okay, we have, like, little packets of cheap soup, which, like, we don't want to give her. That's lame. We're like, what do we do? And so we, like, said a prayer. And then my companion was like, wait. Like, I know what to do. And then remembered that we have this secret floorboard. And she, like, opens it up. And there's, like, a can of clam chowder from Costco, like, who knows where that came from, but it, like, we're like, okay, like, we'll do this, so we just, like, heated it up, and, like, brought it over to her really quick, and it was, like, perfect, because we were able to meet, like, her boyfriend, who we've been wanting to, like, get to know and stuff, so it was, like, it was, like, a divine intervention, it was beautiful, but then we had, like, 15 minutes to get home, and it was, like, easily a 25-minute bike ride home. And we're like, no, like, we have to make it home on time. So my companion's like, well, what do we got to do? Like, you think we'll make it home? And I'm like, no, like, we'll need, like, all green lights, like, superhuman strength. Like, we got we to gotta get this. And she's like, okay. So we're sitting on our bikes at a red light. And she's like, just praise, like, out loud. Like, Heavenly Father, like, we need all green lights and superhuman strength. Like, please help us. And so the light turns green, like, boom, as soon as she says amen. And we just book it. And we're, we're going as hard as we can. I've never pedaled that hard in my life. And we're just dripping sweat, like, trying so hard. And we finally make it home, and it's 9 o'clock. 
on the dot and we just like fall on the floor and we pray and like normally we pray in Japanese like all the time but I was praying in English I'm like Kamisama like that means God I'm like Kamisama like thank you for helping us get home like thank you for learning us that there was like soup under the floor and she was like she started laughing and I was like what she's like you said thank you for learning us there was soup under the floor I was like what like oh hmm anyways so you just have like crazy times like that where it's like I have no idea how I got here I'm just like a white girl from America but then it's like really funny so there's a really beautiful experience where so we were teaching that grandma um in Kauach Nagano and so her whole family is the bishop and his family and so one day we decided we fasted all day with her family and then that afternoon after church, um, we kind of put together this obstacle course of like the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just like going through like the steps of faith and repentance and baptism kind of. But like, you know, like we blindfolded her and she'd have to like hold onto a rope and have faith. Or, like repentance, like she had to, she just had to like go up steps, I think. Um, and then, like, there was an actual gate outside of our church, so she went through the gate of baptism and like, I had to like listen to the voices, like listen to the Holy Ghost, like guiding her through like some obstacles and then up these stairs to, we had set up the chapel to be like, have like lights and I guess it was, it was the cultural hall because it doubled as that, but we put up like white lights and made it look like kind of like Celestial Kingdom and like had her family was waiting there for her, all dressed in white like her grandkids and her daughter and everything it was just so beautiful like like they shared with her like why they wanted to live with her for forever and um be an eternal family and it was just like the coolest thing like to just see like a family come together and like you could see her feel the spirit and we were all just like crying and it was beautiful as a missionary it's really great because you become more humble like you realize like how much you need Heavenly Father's help and like how weak you are. Sometimes it can be easy to get discouraged. Like if things, if you're trying so hard and you're working so hard and things just like aren't working out, um, or you're not seeing like the progression in your investigators like you would hope. And so like, I know that myself and like a lot of my companions like tend to take it like personally, like you like have to like separate between like I'm doing everything I can and people have their agency and just coming to realize that you don't get to make people's choices for them like they have to come to it on their own was a learning experience for sure and that was hard to learn but once you once I did like it was easier to accept people's choices as well as um like you may have this goal um that you're just like so stoked for and like you believe in everything like you're gonna make it you know but but you know I learned that you can believe in miracles and hope for them and pray for them and do everything you can to make that happen but in the end like you don't get to pick your miracles the Lord blesses you with what he sees fit and what like people choose so there were lots of experiences like that where I just realized like you know, like, there's still beauty in that though what I thought would happen didn't happen, something beautiful still happened, and I'm grateful for that. I always looked at missions as, like, separate life, and then, like, this is my real life. But it's not that way. <laughs> like, being a missionary, that's real life. Like, sharing the gospel is, like, the single most important thing we can do, and that I can do. And it doesn't have to be, like, like converting someone. Like, you can, like, fulfill your purpose in sharing the gospel just by, like, strengthening those around you and helping them come closer to Christ, like, wherever they're at in the process, you know? And just doing our best, like, your best is enough. You don't have to be perfect. Like, God doesn't giving you the whole world on your shoulders and saying... Like, here you go, like, see to it, I'm going to leave you for it, you know? But it's really, he just, like, wants you to do your best and loves you no matter what happens. 
Like, Heavenly Father's love isn't conditional on your success, um, just on your how you're trying and like your motive behind that if you love Him. My mission taught me to love people more and like not be afraid to express that love. Cause like I don't really consider myself like an open touchy feely kind of person, you know? But like it definitely made me that person who just like puts your arm around the lady and release say like I love you, like how are you? <laughs> it taught me just just show it. Because people love that. I love it when people do that to me. So